Good afternoon, Your Excellency. We are doing this uh, interview for the Golden Jubilee of uh, the Colegio. First, we'd like to know the year you stayed here as, as a student priest and later on as a rector of uh, the Colegio. I was here a student uh, from 1972, September, until 1976. And uh, I was rector here from 1990. I arrived March and and I was ordained bishop by Pope John Paul II in 1994. So, barely four years. Four years as student and uh, less than four years as uh, rector of the College of Philippines. I succeeded uh, Bishop Almonella, who was here for nine years. And your fond memories of the Colegio as a student and uh, later on as an administrator? We were very few in the 70s. No? That was after martial law. And uh, of course there were, there were a few, I think there were three Indian priests. One from Venezuela and uh, one from Togo who is not a priest, he was studying medicine. Then probably we were around 17 priests at different times. And there were some who were here before me and uh, left and then returned. There were others who, who came after me. But uh, almost all of us became bishops. Bishop Martires, late Bishop Balse, the late Bishop Pelayo, Bishop Salgado, Archbishop Salgado. Um, almost all of us became bishops. And others, like uh, Father Rolly Sanyar, Father Joe Serrano, they left the priesthood. And then um, still others who did not go back to the Philippines. They overstayed in the States. One I know died already, the others I have no contact with. Now, um, in the 70s, that was the first time that uh, migrant Filipinos were coming to Rome and they are normally employed by big people of Italy, even if uh, they are not documented. But it is the pride of the Italians to have a Filipina in their household. And they come here for uh, Sunday masses and uh, for most of them were professionals, no? teachers, principals, who earn here at that time uh, more than you know the, what they earn in one month here, they cannot get that in one year in the Philippines. So and I'm surprised that many of them later on are are still here when I became rector because uh, the, the help that they extend to the families never was never enough. No? So my greatest joy is well in uh, during when I was student is uh, to be able to you know when I was student I never went to the States because I came <clears throat> here with the conviction that uh, there's a lot of richness in Europe that we cannot learn elsewhere. And I was told by a priest whose favorite I am no, to stay in Europe and learn languages and people. So I did precisely that. So I never went to the States because I know really English. I went to the States later on. But I learned languages and I learned to, to see people and how they are progressive, why is it not, why such progress is, does not happen to our country. And one of the good things that are here in Europe that uh, we can have in the Philippines. My greatest regret when I came back to the Philippines after four years, when I, when I speak like this, not trying to tell others about the history of the church in Europe and uh, how much we must read, not repeat history. We should learn from these mis mistakes of others and get entitled to new mistakes because that is new learning. Sometimes it is very hard to convince people because they never saw 
what really happened here. But there are things that we must make sure that we do not fall into but sometimes it's difficult. No? They have to have a first -hand experience. I think my first -hand experience with the history that is never past now. I am convinced that history is never uh, something that happened in the past. It has something to do with our present and it, it is something that uh, will also determine our future. No? It's all alive. No? Even if many of those who were part of history are no longer there, they're really still alive and they have least lessons to tell, to tell us. Now. It's very hard to convince many of our people, even leaders, to learn from history. But I learned a lot from what I experienced and saw in, the whole, in Europe, in many countries here, whose history is much longer than ours now. In the Philippines, we, when we talk of 100, 200 years, it is already something, but here, 100, 200 years only yesterday. Your message to the student, uh, priest, the, resident, the present residents of uh, the Collegio? Having been, uh, by the way, I was also in the first years of my stay as director, I was also the chaplain of the Filipinos for two years now. And I was the one who asked for a church now. But I would not have agreed to the church that we have now. now. It's too small. Now. I was asking for a place where, where, even if it is not a church, but a center where all Filipinos can be formed into better Christians because I believe that the migration of Filipinos is an evangelical advantage. So anyway, <clears throat> I have been very clear in saying that, uh, you know, our stay here more than getting uh, diplomas, that is also important, uh, is uh, an experience of the universality of the church. No? And also a sp an experience of closeness to our Christian roots. And finally, it is uh, a very nice experience to be a school of Philippine inscription, to be formed sub umbra petri. It is important that we are united in the whole church. And the church is not perfect, but it's perfectible. And uh, I believe really that God is, is, is in the church. Though. And the church is very much in the heart of God, in spite of her uh, difficulties. I experienced the difficulties during the time of all the six when even the popes were being maligned. I, when I was uh, rector, I experienced the glory of the church under the, the leadership of uh, John Paul the Great. Uh, we consider him a really, really great pope. No? So, two contrasts, no? but definitely, definitely a church that in the beginning appeared to be already in its dying days, but uh, with the help of and with the inspiration of God through one who will become blessed, John Paul II, uh, a church that is really entering the new springtime and uh, very much uh, active in its us. Now I want to say that to the students that uh, this is not just a privilege to be in Subhubra Patria. We must make use of every moment, every occasion to learn. Not just with the mind, but uh, with our whole being. And to experience what it is to be church. A church that is uh, really Catholic all over. No? And to have a missionary perspective. I, I, I see the presence of the Filipinos here in Italy and elsewhere. And I'm very happy that uh, the College of Filipino students are very caring towards our migrant Filipinos. No? It is important that we impart to them this missionary aspect no, of our Christianity. And uh, it is here in Rome that I have heard people speak about the Philippines really as a very dynamic Catholic Church. No? Uh, it is a privilege but it is also a challenge. And uh, we must not fail God and we must not fail the Church and we must not fail the people of God in these times. No? Much is expected from us. And, uh, and I look forward to the time also that when Collegio Filipino will again be filled. During my time, uh, the, all the rooms of the Collegio Filipino were full of students. No? Of course, there are a few non-Filipinos. But I look forward to the time when students from priests and even uh, future priests will again fill the Collegio with one thing in, in mind, to have in our part
part of the world, a missionary church, a church that's concerned with other, other churches, other churches in other nations. And moreover, during our time and during this time, we always depend on help from rich nations. Uh, even in our theological and philosophical upbringing. But I think we should look very seriously to the uh, uh, time when we will support ourselves as a Catholic nation and we have to make another sacrifices to make sure that we have future church leaders who will really be uh, bearers of a more dynamic future, not only for our country, but also for the church in the whole of the continent of Asia. And lastly, Your Excellency, your message on the occasion of the Golden Jubilee of the Collegia. I would like us to look at the Golden Jubilee as the beginning, a new beginning, not just a celebration of what has been before. Although looking back is always learning, but it is uh, making sure that our present is uh, surely formed by the experience of 50 years, but it is an opening to new horizons. So I wish the Colegio Filipino and the present residents and the future residents uh, all God's graces so that we will really be prophetic, that we will look forward to even more golden years ahead.